Welcome to the My Sam's Card Arrived Now What? Step-by-step NHSN CF Enrollment and Facility Setup Webinar. My name is Vicki, and I will be your operator for today's call. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. Later, we will conduct a question-and-answer session. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I would now like to turn the call over to Teresa. To Teresa Mandela. Teresa, you may begin. Thank you, Vicki. Yes, I am Teresa Mandela, an improvement consultant with VHQC. Next slide. And with me today are Linda Harris, improvement consultant, Sheila McLean, the program director for VHQC, and Sandy Knappett, our NHSN coordinator here at VHQC. We ask today that our time together, that you remain attentive and engaged, open and collaborative, and actionable. Today's session will be recorded, and you will be emailed instructions on how to access the audio recording from our online community. We will also send the slide deck out immediately after today's webinar. Registering to use the National Healthcare Safety Network, or NHSN, and then enrolling your facility is a little bit complicated. So do keep in mind that you'll have access to this webinar in the future from the online community. During our presentation, if you would like to share any thoughts or questions, please use the chat box located to the right of your screen. At the end of the presentation, we will open the phone lines for questions and answer period, as well as answering the chat. At the conclusion of the webinar, we'll post evaluation questions. So take a moment before leaving the event to complete the evaluation, because your feedback is important and appreciated. Some of you, next slide, please. Some of you may work closely with us at VHQC, but others may not know what VHQC is. In 2014, VHQC was selected by CMS Medicare to serve as the QIN 2IO, which stands for Quality Innovation Network, Quality Improvement Organization for both Maryland and Virginia. VHQC's expertise includes knowledge of long-term care, infection prevention, population health management, and building community-based coalitions to reduce readmission. We bring Medicare beneficiaries providers like you and communities together in data-driven initiatives that increase patient safety, make communities healthier, better coordinate post-hospital care, and improve clinical quality. Next slide. As a reminder, since VHQC is funded by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, or CMS, we provide education and support at no cost to nursing homes in Virginia and Maryland through the National Quality Improvement Organization, or QIO, program. Many of you are already members of the VHQC Nursing Home Improvement Network that now includes over 240 nursing homes in Maryland and Virginia. For every initiative, you have access to guidance from VHQC's long-term care team and faculty. Next slide. So at this point, you may be thinking, oh, no, I haven't received my SAMS card yet. Um, have you applied for your SAMS card? Are you still waiting? If you have been waiting longer than three weeks after submitting your documents to the CDC, please contact Sandy Mathic right away. Her email address is sandy.mathic at vhqc.org. And I'll spell that out, but remember, you will have access to these slides. It's S-A-N-D-Y dot K-N-A-P-I-K at vhqc.org. Next slide. If you have not yet applied for your stamps card, I would like you to start hearing the music in your head from the movie Scream or Bride of Chucky. Not really. It's not that bad yet, but you need to get moving. Remember, the participation agreement attesting that the infection prevention team leader in your building will actively participate in this initiative has been uploaded to CMS. This means that your facility has committed to register, enroll, and report into the CDC's NHSN system. So if you haven't already applied for your SAMS card, Here's what we need you to do. 
begin immediately and commit to start that process tomorrow. First thing, please put this in your calendar. Locate the emails in your Outlook from VHQC, plus find your training three-ring binder that's been sent by VHQC. Review the binder contents and especially the email attachment sent to you on September 9th. I'm going to repeat that. On September 9th, you were sent an additional email that contains a step-by-step -step guide to registering yourself and enrolling the facility. Additionally, the binder, the large binder that you received from VHQC contains detailed information and tip sheets. So you'll look at tabs 1 through 7 for the learning sessions on how to do everything in unbelievable detail. And then you'll look at tabs 8 through 10 for special secret tips to help you with the process. Again, contact Sandy Nathak for help, sandy.nathak at dhqc.org. And I want to say a huge congratulations to those of you who have already started. And never fear, we still will send peace and love to all of you that haven't. What we would appreciate is an email from everyone on this line telling us exactly where you are in the process. We can help you with specific tips if we know where you are because we are here to help. So if you would like to mail sandy.napic at vhqc.org, email her, and just let her know where you are in the process. Have you applied for your SAMS card? Are you waiting for it? Has it arrived? Are you already enrolling your facility? Have you already enrolled the facility? Are you setting up your monthly reporting plan, et cetera? Just a one-liner is good enough, but that will help us help track and then assist you, as I said, with special tips. Next slide, please. Real quick in review, what is the NHSN? So if you've been multitasking during this webinar, this is the part where you might want to start paying closer attention. The NHSN is a term that we've been throwing around a lot, and it stands for the National Healthcare Safety Network. It's a system that belongs to the CDC, and it is extremely secure, confidential, and Internet-based. Data reported into the NHSN comes from all over the U.S. and some other countries, and it's used for surveillance, benchmarking, and internal quality improvement. This is the system that we use to communicate into one national repository everything that's going on related to infections across the nation. Hospitals already use it to report many types of infections, and nursing homes now will start using it first to report C. diff. It all goes back to measuring to see if we are making progress in the right direction. Having the data entered into the NHSN helps the CDC monitor the success of infection prevention efforts. Next slide, please. Remember, no matter where you are in this process, you should always go back and refer to the facility enrollment checklist that was supplied to you by the CDC, available online, as an attachment, and in your binder. Um, it is a bit overwhelming, so in addition, we created a document in your binder called Five Steps and You're Ready for CDC NHSN Reporting. Both the checklist and the five steps are in your training binders, but you can also access the checklist anytime at the cdc.gov website, and that um, web link is on the slide that you will have access to. This checklist is also cool because in addition to every single step, it tells you the approximate time you will need to complete each step, and it gives you links, web links, to hard copy forms. Next slide, please. All right. So let's say your, your SAMS card came. You probably don't even know how to act. You're wondering if it shows. The people in the parking lot at Starbucks look at you differently. Well, you can walk with some swagger now, because after it sinks in that you have had your card, it's time to move to the enrollment phase. The first is registration, and you get your SAMS card. It comes in the mail. It is a hard copy card. And now you begin enrollment. Remember 
in the background of this process, you have been collecting information on the paper form, the facility contact information form, and the NHSN long-term care annual facility survey form. Remember that? Now that information that you entered on this hard copy form and in writing will be entered electronically into the NHSN. So how do you do that? Next slide, please. You're going to start seeing the slides on the screen as actual screenshots of what it looks like when you are in the, HSN, the NHSN and you are entering the information. So follow the directions in your binder or that email attachment of September 9th or go to the training on the CDC NHSN website and pull up the SAMS login portal. It would be a really great idea if you save this login portal address, this web address, on your desktop. You're going to sign in with the SAMS grid card credentials, which are located in the middle of that screen. Next slide, please. You're going to enter your username and password. Now, this is important because, remember, this is a password you initially used to set up during the registration phase. Do not try in your mind to remember. If you haven't written it down, please go back to your email that you saved in your Outlook folders and make sure you use the same email address. This is important for those of you that have not started the process yet because you do have to wait sometimes up to three weeks to get your card. And you may have changed all your emails on other things, your passwords, and so you need to remember those and make sure that you have written them down. If you try to get into the SAM logon portal and you try it three times in error, you will be locked out. Locked out as in start all over again. This is a secure national U.S. healthcare repository. It's not Amazon or eBay or the SKIM. So make sure you have written down that username and password in a safe place, and then you remember where the safe place is. Next slide, please. You're going to enter your grid card credentials from your actual SAMS card. There's a picture of what the SAMS card looks like on the right of your screen. The instructions on grid card use were provided when you received the card. Questions? You're going to email Sandy Navick at DHQC for help. Next slide, please. So remember, after receiving your SAMS grid card and you're logging in, now you must enroll your facility. This screen is where you will enter the data from your facility contact form as well as the annual facility survey form. Next slide. You're going to click on Enroll a Facility in the middle of the screen. And again, I apologize. I know this is boring. But when you look back, it is a little bit complicated, and I think it would be helpful for you to see these um, screenshots, and they are in your binder as well. Next slide, please. Now, remember, you have to complete the enrollment phase in one sitting, and it's virtually impossible to complete this enrollment online form without the answers that you found and wrote down on the paper forms, which is the annual facility survey form and the contact form. So you need to have those forms printed out in advance, answers investigated, written down on them, and then you're going to transfer your answers from the paper form to the online form. I'm really serious. You can't save your work when you're doing the enrollment. You can't get interrupted. You will time out if you go hunting for the answer and you don't have it quickly. So it's not worth it to go through that aggravation. Complete the forms, please, in advance. And also, as an aside, we have put copies of those forms in your training binder. Next slide, please. Sometimes the CDC and the NHSN are sneaky. They will put in electronic fields in a form with sections that you do not need to complete because you're a nursing home. And this system was originally designed more with hospitals in mind. But what you need to remember is you're always going to enter the information in fields with a red asterisk. 
won't fill in the fields without the asterisk. Those are there for the other healthcare folks. Next slide, please. Next, you're going to enter your facility's six-digit CCN, that's a Medicare certification number. You're going to enter that number here along with the effective date. You're like, oh, my gosh, you've got to be kidding. I don't know where that is, and I don't know what the date is. This information was sent to you in your welcome email from VHQC. If you cannot rotate your welcome email for this project, please contact us right away, and we'll be happy to send your Medicare CMS certification number. If your facility does not have a CCN, which is exceptionally rare, so I don't think there's probably anyone on this webinar that does not have a CCN, but if you don't think for some reason you have a CCN, you can contact us first. Or if we also agree you don't have a CCN, which would mean your building had to have opened like two days ago, then you're going to contact NHSN at cdc.gov for a temporary number. But that is only if you do not have a CCN. Next slide, please. Now remember, you are an LTCF. You are a long-term care facility. You're not a long-term care hospital. And that's confusing because when the menu pops up and you're just seeing the words long-term care, it's easy to check long-term care hospital. Um, there is someone on this line, I believe, that is also a long-term care hospital, but that's unusual. Most of you on the line are long-term care facility, LTCS. And again, when you're on this page and then they're asking for facility type info, you are only completing the information in the fields that have an asterisk. Next slide, please. Okay, this is the part that's like highlighting you. The LTCF component requires a contact person. This is usually the NHSN facility administrator. This is not the nursing home administrator, except in rare instances. It's the NHSN facility administrator, which is the designated infection prevention person in your building. Next slide, please. The electronic survey must be completed in its entirety before the information entered can be saved. We're not kidding. <laughs> The CDC is keenly aware that this is an issue, that people get interrupted, and they don't like to have to do this in one sitting. But it's not going to change because this is actually a part of the SECURE program. It's not ideal to sit down at the nursing station to complete this because you know you're going to be interrupted there. Next slide, please. We recommend that you immediately save and submit this annual survey information once you've inputted it. So you're sitting down, you're doing it all at one time, and then don't forget to save it. Sometimes folks will print the completed survey and then enter it and then forget to save, and guess what? Then you have to enter it in all over again. But here's one good thing. Once you have, once you have saved it, and submitted it, you can access and print that annual facility survey at any time for use in the future. Once you save and submit the information, you will receive a notice telling you that an email will arrive with further instructions. Oh, goody, it's one more email for you to save. If you haven't set up an NHSN folder in your Microsoft Outlook, you will definitely want to do this soon. Next slide, please. And this is what you're going to get. You're going to receive an email entitled NHSN Facility Enrollment Submitted. Listen up. That sounds like an email you probably don't even want to open. It sounds kind of boring. You know you submitted it. You need to open it. You have 30 days to click on the link in that email. Again, it's entitled NHSN Facility Enrollment Submitted. After you've submitted and you've saved, you've submitted the form, then you're going to get that email. If you miss the 30-day deadline, you don't get to collect $200. You don't have to go, and yep, you get to start all over again enrolling your facility. It isn't worth it. 
So when you get this email, if you can't click on the link and follow the directions immediately, please put a task in your calendar with a deadline of, say, 21 days from there to ensure you have enough time to respond. But we know how you really are, and you're probably going to want those bonus points, so you'll activate the link immediately and follow the instructions. Next slide, please. So what happens when you click the link? It takes you to two forms that you will print. You and the skilled nursing facility administrator will sign and mail. Yes, as in the post office mail, the completed forms to the CDC. Again, these forms are going to come to you after you click the link. They're going to pop up. You're going to have the facility leadership sign them and the long-term care facility primary infection prevention contact person, and then you're going to mail them to the CDC. Go ahead and make copies before you mail them. And in two to three business days after the NHSN receives the signed consent form, NHSN will activate your enrolled facility. The NHSN facility administrator, that's you on the phone, you will receive email notification of facility activation from the NHSN. The subject line of that email is, are you ready? It's earth shattering. NHSN enrollment approved. Rather boring, but it's a big milestone. Next slide, please. All right. After all the cheering has died down at your facility, because you are now enrolled as an NHSN, it's time to set up the facility in the system. So remember, we've done registration, you got your SANS card, now you've enrolled the building, you've turned in all of your forms, the enrollment has been activated, and now you're going to set up the facility. Um, it's interesting, it's good because it's a one-time process. This setting up only ever needs to be updated if the location and the facility changes. For example, if a unit closes or a brand new unit is added, or if the case mix of a unit significantly changes. There's three parts to this process. It's adding facility locations, which is also called mapping, adding a monthly reporting plan, and adding additional users. Next slide, please. When it's time for you to sign on for the setup, you're going to select NHSN reporting, since you've already enrolled your facility. Next slide, please. This is the active view on the screen from one of our VHQC team members' accounts. So you see what it looks like. You're going to select your component. Remember, you are a long-term care facility. And then you're going to identify your building because the name of your organization will pop up on the menu there as a choice. You hit Submit, and that's when your user name, username and ID show up in the upper left corner. Next slide, please. Again, select the component is the long-term care facility. Click on Your Facility, and once you submit, complete the areas that have a red asterisk. Next slide, please. This sounds like fun, and this actually is not a difficult part of this. It's called the mapping. And we have some tips for you for mapping your locations within the NHSN system. And that's because most nursing homes have different physical locations where the residents reside and receive care in the building. They may be called units, wards, floors, neighborhoods, etc. Each resident care area should be mapped but not things like the dining room or the activity room. You're kind of mapping their residence area where care is given. So why are you doing this? So that when all nursing homes are reporting C. diff infections, and it shows, for example, that rehab units or memory care units have clusters of infected residents, that could be helpful in our understanding the spread and prevention of C. diff within nursing facilities. Next slide, please. This is what the screen looks like, and again, you're going to fill in the cells with a red asterisk. Your code and your location 
are specific to your facility. Choose the terminology that best describes how you identify units within your facility. So like two north, Azalea, one east, Chesapeake, unit five. If you are confused about the location description types, the CDC, and I have it, well, I don't think it's on the screen. It is if you blow that screen up a bit. Um, but there is a drop-down box that has description code definitions. You can click on the link at cdc.gov, and they go into a lot of um, definitions. Don't freak out. This web link for the definitions is located behind tab 3 in your binder. And status, after you fill out this screen, the status will default to active, and you will click on add at the bottom to add more units. Next slide, please. There's a pull-down list that you will choose from to describe the type of long-term care facility that you are adding, the type of unit that you're adding. Okay. Um, next slide, please. Once again, just to show you, there is a definition table of the type of location codes you can refer to. And so when you're like, what is she talking about? We're talking about things like, is it an inpatient hospice unit, a dementia unit, a general nursing unit, a psych unit? Next slide, please. They even have bariatric unit, ventilator unit, short-term rehab unit. There's 15 in total for you to choose from. So they're pretty straightforward. Next slide, please. On this slide, it shows you what a completed form looks like. Remember, the status default it goes to active. Review carefully the locations you have entered before you add that location permanently, because the locations cannot be deleted, only deactivated. All right? Don't forget to click Add as soon as you put them in. So make sure you haven't put in um, duplicate to north. Or if it's Magnolia unit, make sure you have it misspelled it, because once it's in there, it's really almost impossible to change. Next slide, please. All right, this is the screenshot after you have hit Add. You will continue to add all the units until the facility is completely mapped. And once you have added a unit, you will note that there's a green checkbox at the top of the screen on the left that is checked, and it shows that you have successfully added a unit. On this example, it shows that the location Sunflower 1 has been successfully added. And I would like to give a nice shout-out to that facility on this call that has named their unit Sunflower 1. Bravo, because that's, like, way better than Mocking Day or Kardashian. Next slide, please. Here are some mapping tips. Again, complete the fields with an asterisk. The your code and your label are set up by you to easily identify the location in your facility. The code and the label can be the same. The CDC location descriptions are preset by the CDC. Choose the location from the list that best describes the type of resident care or services delivered on that unit. So you could have a mix of different types of residents on a unit, but select the type of unit that represents the majority of residents and the type of care and services that you give on that unit. The bed size is an optional field showing the numbers of bed on that, beds on that unit. I would highly suggest this filling that in. And then remember to review everything before you click Add, because once a location has been added, it cannot be deleted. It can only be deactivated. Next slide, please. So once you've mapped out your locations, you're ready to report. You will report every single month, even if you have zero C. diff cases in your building. Why? Because you want to take credit for having zero C. diff in your building. I can't stress that enough. Remember how the hospitals say all the C. diff in the world comes from the nursing home? Here's our shot. It doesn't. We have some. We don't have it all. So when you have zero, you're going to be reporting zero. The CDC 
likes to call the monthly reporting plan an MRP because they can't seem to get enough of abbreviations. You will be asked if you want to report on things like hand hygiene and personal protective equipment and MDROs, which are multi-drug resistant organisms. Please, please, please resist the temptation to become an overachiever here. For this CDIF initiative, you are only reporting on CDIF. So just select that you're doing CDIF field reporting. Next slide, please. You're going to select Add from the navigation toolbar on the left on this screen and complete all the data indicated again by mm -mm, the red asterisk. You're going to go to the Lab ID event module and select Facility-wide for your location and CDIF for specific organism types. Okay? So whenever it's asking you um, the location, it's, you're not just going to say it's two north and magnolia units. It's always going to be facility-wide to include all the units that you have put in from the mapping. And remember, you're going to click see dip as a specific organism. When you do that, the box for lab ID event, all specimens, will automatically be checked as a default. And that's what you want. When your facility is selected from the pull-down list, you will need to choose the month and year that your facility will be doing the surveillance. Remember, you will be entering this every month all the way up through December 31st, 2018, at the very least. Next slide, please. So remember again to go to the Lab ID event module Select facility-wide for location and see this for specific organism type. And the box for lab ID event, all specimens, will automatically be checked as a default. And then don't forget to save that selection at the bottom. Next slide. Okay, how cool is this? You can add monthly reporting plans or MRPs in advance. In other words, you're setting it up as a calendar template in advance. So when you add monthly reporting plans in advance, an alert will appear each time you do that. It notifies you you've added the plan but have not entered the data. Well, that's good because you're doing it in advance and you don't have the data yet. So when the alert comes up, you're going to check OK. You can see in the upper left corner, again, a green check mark in the box indicates that an MRP, or monthly reporting plan, has been successfully created. You can create up to a year's worth of monthly reporting plans in advance. Next slide, please. Remember, you must report each month, and we need you to start reporting on October 31st, 2016, or in the month of November. This November, not next year. This November. There may be exceedingly rare instances when your facility cannot perform surveillance. For example, there could be a hurricane for a nursing home in Louisiana or Florida. Checking that box that you are not performing surveillance informs the CDC your facility is not reporting data for that particular month, but it's still participating in the project. This is not to be happening for anyone on this call unless there is a dire circumstance in your building. Okay? And dire circumstance does not mean that the infection prevention person was off. It means that for some reason, as a building, you were unable to collect any data on infections, which, as we know, does not happen unless there is a dire circumstance. Next slide, please. Remember, you can set up 12 months of MRPs and monthly reporting plans if you wish. It's cool because this is a big time saver option. This is a time when it's okay to copy your friend's paper. You want to set these up in advance. If you choose not to do that, it's fine. But then every single month you're going in and recreating the template 
for your monthly reporting plan before you can start entering the data. That's a time waste. Next slide, please. And I know none of us on this call will ever make mistakes, cough, cough, but if you know someone who may have entered something incorrectly in the NHSN and they realize it later, you may modify the plan by finding the report submitted and editing it. If you modify the plan, don't forget, you have to save it after you have made the question. Next slide, please. This slide is a great review right before you go to set up that monthly reporting plan. It reviews adding the plan, plan options, and how to modify a plan. Okay? Next slide, please. One day, you might decide to take a long vacation or have a baby or win the lottery, and you will want to ensure that someone else in your building can enter the monthly report to the CDC. Remember, your submissions are tracked, and it will be apparent if you missed a submission of the data in a particular month. So, you want to add users. You can't really add them in the beginning of the NHSN process because first your facility has to be enrolled. But after the facility is enrolled and activated, we suggest that you add up to four more users for each facility. I can tell you that most buildings select the director of nursing, the assistant director of nursing, the MDS coordinator, the quality improvement nurse. Remember, this is in addition to you. You are the NHSN facility administrator. Others also that belong to larger corporations may want to add a regional nurse as well. Next slide, please. The NHSN facility administrator, remember that's you, you will be the person that adds the users. You will assign the user ID and user name, which is typically the user's first and last name, such as Jane Smith or Steve Harvey. And wouldn't it be cool if Steve Harvey worked in your facility? But you will enter the person's email address as well. So remember, this you can't delegate this task, and it will help you ultimately to get your coworkers started in the process once the facility is enrolled. Next slide, please. You, the NHSN facility administrator, will assign a password for the user that may be changed at a later date by the user. So I don't even need to tell you how important it is to keep that password yourself that you've assigned until the new user has changed it. Next slide, please. The NHSN facility administrator will then assign the rights for each user. The choices are administrator, nope, 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 that's you. The next one is all rights. That one is probably ideal for your director of nursing and even a regional corporate nurse. The next one is analyze data. I would not check that one. That means just someone who pretty much has, like, read-only access but wouldn't be able to enter and add, edit, and delete. That one is up to you, but, again, it's the... The user that would be directly under the NHSN facility administrator. And then the ability to view data, which you could offer to folks as well. But again, the all rights and the add, edit, delete are those that are the most helpful. Next slide, please. So if a user that you've set up decides they're going to move to Tahiti and leave the facility, or they're no longer going to participate in the data entry into NHSN because they've taken a different type of position, then you, the NHSN facility administrator, will deactivate the user. Users are never deleted because if they were deleted, we would lose any history of things they put in, but they are deactivated. Next slide, please. Okay, guys, we're close to being done. Are you feeling the power yet? Important things to remember about adding a user are, number one, all new users must register with SAMS and go through that identity verification process. 
It's not as long as the one that you went through initially because your building wasn't enrolled, but they still will fill out the identity verification forms, have them notarized, submit everything, track the email. So you will need to be helping them with that. It is also the responsibility of the NHSN facility administrator to deactivate any users that are no longer at the facility or you do not wish to see your facility's data in the secure system. It's important to add this to your human resources to do reminder list when an employee leaves. It's ultimately your responsibility as the NHSN facility administrator to remember to deactivate them, but HR could be very helpful by having this on a checklist to help jog your memory. Next slide, please. All right, now you feel the power. You have enrolled, you have mapped, you have set up monthly reporting plans, and you have added users. The only things left are learning how to interpret and enter the data so you can report it. And that's what we will do next time on Wheel of Fortune. Oh, no, just testing to see if you're still awake out there. Although Pat Sajak did marry a girl from Annapolis, so it is kind of local for us. All right, next slide, please. Now, please, please write down this date. Tuesday, October 18th, from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m., to learn the final steps in your NHSN CDIF reporting journey. Only one more. Can you imagine? You are that close. Next slide, please. So now you know the steps for registration and initial enrollment and setup. Everything that we have gone over to this point is absolutely the most complicated pieces of the process. So don't get freaked out now, because once you get all this done, it gets so much better, and it gets easier. And we know this for a fact by working with infection prevention nurses in hospitals and some nursing homes that have already been sending in their data for a few years. Once you have registered and enrolled the facility, set up the reporting plan, then you can begin the monthly reporting on the cases of C. diff that you do or do not have in your building. After about the third month of reporting, we know it should only take you five to seven minutes per month to submit the reports to the CDC. So all this intense time you are putting in on the front end will pay off and ultimately, theoretically, by, say, January of 2017, this, this for you starts to go on autopilot and becomes a five to seven minute per month exercise. Next slide, please. And I know because you binge watch Scandal and House of Cards and The Good Wife on Netflix, so we know you're going to watch these and want to watch these NHS 10 webinars we've been giving over and over and over. There are directions on this slide to sign up for the online community so that you can watch this webinar, the SAM registration webinar, and any future learning sessions anytime you would like. Next slide, please. Remember, you don't need to go it alone in this initiative. You can email us or call us, and we will work with you to resolve any issues whatsoever. Candy Nappick, with the silent K as the first letter of her last name, truly is your go-to person for NHS questions. And certainly Linda Harris and I are here to assist as well. Our contact information is here on the slide. It's in emails we sent you. It's on your binder. So do not hesitate to reach out to any of us. Next slide, please. All righty. Uh, Vicki, would you mind letting everyone know how to ask a question and open the phone lines? And we will also be looking at the chat questions at this point. Okay, most definitely. We'll now begin the question and answer session. If you have a question, please press star, then one on your touchtone phone. If you wish to be removed from the queue, please press the pound sign or the hash key. If you are using a speaker phone, you may need to pick up the handset first before pressing the numbers. Once again, if you have a question, please press star, then one on your touchtone phone.
I may not try. You could be asleep after this webinar. <laughs> There's a lot of screenshots, but don't be shy. Okay, our first. Mm -hmm. Sorry, uh, um, our first question comes from Elizabeth Bates from uh, uh, Potomac Health Health. Please go ahead. Yes, thank you. Um, I'm going to be the administrator for two facilities that we have, and I just want to make sure that I'm uh, doing the process correctly. I've submitted for my Sam's Club for myself card as since I am the administrator. Um, and if I'm understanding correctly, once I get that, then I will register both of the facilities. Is that correct? That is a great question. Sandy, would you like to weigh in on that? Or Katie? Yes. Yes, I can um, weigh in on that. This is Sandy. Um, you can go ahead and um, if, have you already gotten your SAMS card or registered for it? Um, I've, you know, sent in for it. I've sent the information. I've got about another week, and it'll, it'll be that the three-week period, so I should be getting it shortly. Okay. Um, you can go ahead and wait to register the other facility. I mean, you can do the steps one and two, but you're not going to want to um, complete that information again. As long as your email is the same at both facilities, you should yeah, not have a problem. You should be the administrator. You should be able to be the NHSN administrator at both facilities and use one SAMS card. Okay. Katie, do I have it right? Yes, and I think to answer the question, you can enroll both facilities through your access. Okay. Yeah. So, ba so basically, after I get my SAMS club, then I would just complete those um, those paper forms, enter all the information on, but do it twice, basically, the process. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Elizabeth, you have no idea that you just made our day because you called it a SAMS club card. And that's I you know. Know. I realized that after I said that. I love it. That's how many of us think of it. Thank you. <laughs> We need some of that sometimes, and, and many of us probably wish it was a fan club card that we were getting. So, thank you. Can we have any other questions? Go ahead. Sorry. Um, we do have more uh, people filed in for questions. The next question is from Wendy and Noel Rose from Genesis Healthcare. Yes, hi, good evening. Um, I must say I was a little bit confused. It's hard to make this a little bit clearer, but I still have a question. So I got an email saying that my son's blood card is there, but I haven't gotten it in my hand. I thought it was something like on the email, but I haven't gotten anything physical in my hand. And then I got an uh, email saying that, that my binder is going to come. So does it come with a binder? This is Sandy. Um, the binder is something that VHQC created and put together for you all, and that has been mailed out to you, mm -hmm. and um, you should be getting that any day. Um, and I'm sorry, I, I just drew a blank on the other question. Oh, the email. Yeah, yeah. yeah. the Sam Scott. Yeah, and I'm email saying that, you know, your see Sam Scott is here and now what? But I haven't received anything physical. I think my... That, my, that my email own. is actually that email is actually for this webinar. We have a lessons learned from this whole scenario. Is that when we do a webinar, we're going to put register now in the front of it, mm -hmm. <laughs> in the subject line, because a number of people have gotten confused over the fact that they thought their same card had arrived when in fact it's the title of the, the registration for this email. Um, okay. You. Your SAMS card will come in the mail to your home address. So, um, so, I, so once I registered, once I registered, um, that, yeah, I think I registered to be in it, uh, like sending my name and address and all that stuff. That would send my card to me. I don't have to join. Just wait for the card to come. Yes, and, and actually, um, you and I have not talked before, so if you want to call me after the webinar, um, we can discuss further um, to make sure that you are where you're supposed to be. All right, great. Well, mm -hmm. I think um, your building um, was a very recent one to sign yes, up, so we thought you've not received your binder yet. Um, and I'd love to tell you that it's, you're just going to fill out a little email. <laughs> it's going to come, but it is a little more complicated. And right. the great pages. That's what I see now. 
Yeah, it, it is a little complex. Sandy will walk you through it. And, again, the good news is all the time you're going to spend on the front end will pay off, and, and it absolutely does get easier. So that was a great question. And, yes, yeah, Sandy is right. We, we would like to apologize to all of you that when you received the invitation to this webinar and it said, my SAM has arrived, now what, that – um, it sounded like your SAMS card was coming to you through that email. So we did learn a lot from that. <laughs> so then I would call you and make a call to Yes. Okay, yeah. cool. I can that was do that. great. Um, Sandy, maybe you could even email Wendy your um, direct information so that you guys okay. can get together quickly. Cause I don't okay, know you can tell me that would be good for me to call you and all that stuff. Okay. Great. All right, great. Thank you. Certainly. Do you have any other questions? Yes, our next question comes from Paula Boyer from Glade Alley Center. Hi. My question is, I understand the administrator ends up and she activates everything, but what happens, and then she registers other users, so the important part here is that she registers other users because if the administrator leaves for some reason, what happens with the SAMS card? Anybody can use that SAMS card? This is Sandy again. The SAMS card is your own personal card, and when you um, – move to another facility, you can take that card with you. Um, it is not a facility card. Each individual person who will be given rights to um, access SAMS will have to go through the identity verification process, and each person will receive their own SAMS card. Okay, so once the administrator opens that up, then you get your own SAMS card, and then you, and, okay. So. Then, then once you finish enrolling the facility, then you, the NHSN facility administrator can then assign rights to other users, and then they will go through the identity verification process as well. Okay, perfect. I just wanted to understand that because, unfortunately, for all of us that work in long-term care, people come and people go. Uh, mm -hmm. and a lot of responsibility and a lot of work getting it in, but it sounds like once you're set up, you're good, and then as long as other people have that right, then they can go in and keep the information that they need to do. Correct. And if, if say, your NHSN facility administrator is walked out the building and they're no longer employed with you and no one else in the building is the NHSN facility administrator, mm -hmm. the nursing home administrator can send a letter to the CDC on company letterhead telling them who they want in that new role as the NHSN facility administrator. It can't be the same person. So like Paula, you cannot send the letter saying you're going to now be the NHSN facility administrator. It's going to have to be someone else on the corporate level or someone like your, your actual nursing home administrator will have to do that. So there are going to be times when you don't have someone in that role, and you need to take care of that right away. Yeah, and I'm thinking you sent me the email, because mine happens to be out right now in medical, so I'm a little bit nervous, but she's supposed to be back October 5th, so I should be okay. I'm just worried if she has the email setting in, that she have her card, but um, at least I still have a little bit of time. <laughs> yeah, we'll work with you, Paula. Okay, yeah. all right, thank you. Yes, and again, it does, the card does come to your home address, so even your person that's out, if they send in their identity verification documents and they're waiting, the card will actually go to their home. Um, and again, I'd like to say thank you for having a lighthearted day, because um, I've never heard your facility called Glade Alley before, but that's a good one. It's a valley. It's okay. That's right. You're really Glade Valley. <laughs> Glade Alley is good, too. Thank you, and that was a great question. Do you have other questions? We do. We have Melanie Glover from Saber Health. Hi, this is Bo. Melanie's sitting next to me. Uh, my question is, uh, we've gone through some of the training, and I did um, apply for the uh, SAM card, or I got an email that said, you know, thank you, you'll receive your um, information in two to three hours. Um, so is that my next step? It's just a wait um, with that email before I can before I can then um, go through the proofing? 
Yes, this is Sandy. Um, though what you'll have to do is, if it's been more than 24 hours that that email has come, you'll need to send an email to nhsn at cdc.gov and tell them that you're trying. I'm sorry, Sandy. You're... No, I just got the email probably an hour ago. Yeah. Oh, okay. So if it hasn't been, if you if you don't get the email within 24 hours, give me a call and I'll tell you exactly what you need to do. Okay, um, and that's where they would get the information where you said they're going to send the Sam's um, car to your home address. Because I don't want my home address into anything. Okay. No, you won't. Right. You won't have entered your home address yet. You'll enter that when you get to st okay. step three after you get that invitation to register email. Okay. So, and then Melanie, who's also going to be um, a representative here, um, she will go through the same process. Yes. Now we have Melanie as the lead role in this, um, oh, so yes. Yeah. <laughs> so if you want to call me after the webinar, we can talk um, further about Melanie's role. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Mhm. Mm right. And and just to clarify, um, remember, getting the stamp card is like getting special White House clearance. You will be gathering verification documents, like either your birth certificate or a passport and your driver's license, and you will take those uh, with a form you filled out to a notary, and the notary will not just sign and stamp. They actually have to read and fill in certain parts, and then you will scan those notarized documents and then email that to the CDC and then you will get the notification that they've received it, and two to three weeks after that happens is when your SAMS card will arrive in the mail at your home address. Any other questions? We have no further questions at this time. All righty. Well, we've gone over the evaluation form that's on the right of your screen. Uh, um, Teresa, we did have some questions on the chat. Oh, okay. Well, if everyone can hang on, um, if if that works for WebEx, if we could go just a little longer, that would be great. Um, this is Sandy. From Sardine, we have a, a question about will we be able to record this webinar when the SAMS card comes in. Yes, it's a recorded webinar, and we will be sending out a link to the webinar um, once we get it. And that, that will be in a, a couple of days. Um, the temporary ID card that someone asked about, those um, temporary IDs are valid um, only for 30 days. Um, so if they've given you a temporary ID and an email, then it's only valid for the 30-day time period. Um, you cannot begin enrollment prior to getting access to the SAMS grid card. Uh, you can do only what you can do from, from each step. You can't skip a step or move forward. And we have another question. Are we required to input nosocomial C. diff infections only? We do get residents admitted to us with C. diff. Do we report those as well? The next webinar is going to go over that um, information in detail. And there is a um, uh, definition as to what is going to be considered a C. diff infection um, uh, assigned to your facility versus one that is not assigned to your facility. I think that's all the questions. Can I just jump in? This was a similar question on the previous webinar as well, and I just want to make sure that it's clear that this is a lab ID event. So a positive lab result when the received when the patient is in your facility is going to trigger a proxy for infection, and it may or may not actually be attributed to your facility but in many instances, you will be entering into any into the actual NHSN system. Well, if it occurs within three days of yes. admission, I don't think that you um, are reporting it. But again, that will go um, be in the um, next webinar in, in detail. Right, and NHSN has built-in safe checks for that as well. Yes, really yes. Cool. and we also I created a. Um, uh, a line item um, document that we'll be sending out to everybody to kind of keep track of when something is considered um, a reportable event. Right. Perfect. 
So October 18th, 2 to 3 p.m., if everybody can put that on their calendar, that would be great. Yes, and, and Teresa, this PowerPoint's going to be sent out today, correct? Uh, if not today, tomorrow, yes. Within 24 okay. hours of us finishing this, the slide deck from today, not the, not the whole webinar with the audio, but the slide deck itself with the screenshots will be sent out within 24 hours of this webinar. Anything else? Well, I can't thank you all enough. As we said, we know this was not the most exciting webinar. <laughs> so you hung in there, and we truly appreciate it. I think you have all of our contact information. Do not hesitate to reach out. You are not alone, and we will absolutely help you on the CDF NHSN reporting journey. Hope everybody has a fantastic evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This concludes today's conference. Thank you for participating. You may now disconnect.